We can use Schottky diode mixers like these ones from Mini Circus as frequency doublers. I have a setup here with a power splitter, 3 dB splitter, 0 degrees, into a box wherein I have one of these mixers. And with this splitter I feed the same signal into both the RF port and the LO port. So at the output I will have the sum and the difference. The difference is zero, that means DC, and the sum is 20 megahertz. Uh, the splitter combiner is this one, and uh, its losses are low, 0.15 decibels only. What I see on the IF port looks like this. The level is minus 17 dBm and the input is plus 7, which means it is plus 4 on RF and plus 4 on the, I, on the LO port. Now, uh, the DC voltage is big because uh, the two signals are in phase. So if I connect an inductor in parallel here, the signal becomes much stronger. So we have to allow the DC current to flow. And now the level is minus 2.76 or minus 2.8 or something for the 20 megahertz signal. When I send in 10 megahertz at plus 7 dBm, I can get more output than this by increasing the signal level input like this and you can see the level of other overtones increases but I can reach something like one and a half dBm and that is with 16 dBm input means 13 on the two ports this is above specifications but what is more important uh, this doubler becomes noisy when too much current is sent into it. So uh, I will investigate that in a separate study. Here I will just look at uh, the amplitudes as a function of the power on the different frequencies that are present. But before that I will change the power splitter and I do the measurements on 20 megahertz at a signal level of plus 7 dBm, where the level is minus 2.75 uh, in this configuration. Now I have put a T connector to split the signals into the two ports. The level is significantly lower, it's only minus 4.1 dBm now. And the reason is probably only that there is a mismatch here. This point is 25 ohms rather than 50 ohms, so there is a mismatch. I could put the matching network here and probably get back to the previous level. Now I'm using a 90 degree hybrid, like that. And that gives a slightly better signal. It's now minus 2.3 dBm. So this is what I will go, go for when building frequency doublers. I can also, when I remove this short circuit for the DC voltage, there is a very small difference. Or there isn't any difference. Because I feed the two ports 90 degrees out of phase, so the DC voltage happens to be zero. So it doesn't matter if I short it or not. This is what the 90 degree hybrid looks like internally. Uh, two capacitors between two inputs here and between the other two inputs there. And then a twisted pair. 0.2 millimeter enamel wire 
turned some turns around this plastic bobbin. There is no ferrite anywhere. Uh, the number of turns or the inductance of this twin wire inductor should have an impedance of 50 ohms on the frequency of interest. And the capacitors should have that also, if I remember correctly, or maybe the half. You can Google for these things. But normally you find people use ferrites here. And I don't do that because I use this frequency double to measure close range uh, noise. And ferrites get modulated by the fields from my computers leaking low frequency fields. And that destroys the measurements I'm going to do later on or with this doubler. Well, I decided to look it up. You can see where it is. And here you can see the capacitors should be 100 ohms and the inductor 50 ohms at the signal of if interest. And as they say, we have seen this in many ARL articles for 7 megahertz. So this should be well known, uh, but we don't need any iron here. This is my setup for interferometry. I have here a Schottky diode mixer, uh, the 23 dBm level, so this can take more power than the one I recently showed. And here is the 90 degree hybrid. And at the moment I am taking the signal that I am going to feed there into the spectrum analyzer. And as you can see, the level is plus 27 dBm. The signal on 20 MHz for this 27 dBm split it into 24 on each input gives me 14.7 dBm on the mixer port. And I connect here an inductor that has a very small influence. So I don't need to uh, short circuit the DC voltage because with 90 degree phase shift the DC voltage is very close to zero. I will now measure the level of these different frequencies 10, 20, 30, 40 megahertz. That's enough for me to worry about at different input levels. And I do that with this attenuator in steps of 1 dB. So here are the levels of the different frequencies from plus 27 down to plus 8 dBm. The leak through doesn't show anything of interest and also the higher frequencies look uninteresting. So I don't worry about those. The double frequency uh, looks interesting. I will plot the difference between this column and the input power. It looks like this. So what you have here is the conversion gain. It's minus 10 dB here. That's at the power level of about 18 or 19 dBm. That's uh, 4 decibels below the rated level of the mixer. And I know from previous experiments that <clears throat> going up to the highest levels causes noise in the mixer. Now knowing where optimum conversion efficiency is, I will study the noise properties here and here and here, something like that. And that will be a different video. <coughs> a Schottky diode frequency multiplier is associated with flicker noise, means noise added close to the carrier. Here is a measurement of the flicker noise in this 
uh, frequency multipliers with the uh, 23 dBm uh, mixers from mini circuits with 90 di degree hybrids and you can see at the most power I have plus 27 dBm means 24 dBm into LO as well as RF ports I have noise at this level uh, reducing by 3 decibels only the noise is go down by almost 10 decibels the red curve another 3 decibels reduction of the signal reduces the noise but very little only about 1 or maybe 2 decibels it means I move from this point to this point and then this point and this is near the optimum conversion efficiency where the noise is as the green curve here so uh, I think that is what we need to know about this kind of mixers there is an interesting phenomenon there is noise at about 115 kilohertz away from the carrier and it's visible, of course, best when the mixer is running at a high power level. Uh, I don't know anything about the source of this, but uh, at lower levels this disappears in the sensitivity of the test system I have. It goes below the minus 174 dBm per hertz that is associated with room temperature and of course the level is minus 176 dBc per hertz uh, compared to normal requirements that is very good